you, Chair. I've got a couple of questions, not too many, to follow up on Commonwealth surplus property programs. So specifically the Commonwealth Land Disposal Register and the Commonwealth Surplus Property Divestment Program. Mm -hmm. We've got the right people at the table for those two? Sounds like heaps of fun, doesn't it? Okay. Um, <laughs> do you have a comprehensive list for the properties that have been listed and then sold under these two programs since they've been in operation? Sorry, which two programs? So the Commonwealth Land Disposal Register. Yep. Yep. And the more recently introduced, I think in the 14-15 budget, the Commonwealth Surplus Property Divestment yep. Program. Yep. We, we can provide that to you probably on notice if you don't mind. Yeah, if it's a the answer is yes, but reasonable amount of material, yeah. that's great. Thank you. Um, so this is publicly owned land um, and premises, some of it developed, some of it not, that's being sold off to the private market. So we would appreciate the lists of the two. I might put some further questions as we go about how you might be able to disaggregate some of that material for us so that we can get a read on on what's walking out the door. Um, maybe without having tabled it, if you can tell us, does it include information including things like type of property, size, location, sale price, purchaser, condition of sale, things like that? Yes, Senator, for properties we have divested, for properties that are currently um in the market for sale, we wouldn't necessarily disclose evaluations. Yeah. But we can provide I, most of that. I get that. Okay. But for stuff that's already out the door, that, that's yes. reasonably reliably available, that's great. Um, now, the policy on asset disposal, and pick me up if, if this policy doesn't apply equally to both. If there's a distinction, please draw my attention to it. Commonwealth property having no alternative efficient use is to be sold on the open market at full market value. That's Commonwealth's. That's. Commonwealth Property Disposals Policy it applies so to real property. To? Real, real property. property. So land. Right. Um, when was that policy last reviewed? <coughs> have to take that on notice, Senator. If you could. When that was set down, that would be good to know. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what I'm going to come to is whether there are any outcomes uh, or conditions or possibility of bringing conversation about housing affordability into this rather large scale sell off of Commonwealth real estate that's underway. Could you point me to any housing affordability outcomes or objectives that are attached to any of these sales? Well, so, sorry, when you sort of classify it as a large scale sell off, uh, I, I guess I've just got to sort of remind uh, you here that the Parliament. Um, made a decision or endorsed a proposal by the government by passing relevant legislation to wind down the uh, Aubrey Wodonga uh, Development mm. Corporation, which uh, you uh, may or may not recall former then Prime Minister Gough Whitlam set up in the 70s. A bit before uh, my as, time, Senator Collins. As, 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 as part of an effort to create a new capital city on, on the boundaries between uh, New South Wales and Victoria. So 120 odd properties that uh, are uh, now uh, within the finance portfolio and progressively being sold uh, relate to that winding down of the Aubrey Wodonga Development Corporation. So I'm, I'm not entirely, I, I don't know that I accept your characterization in your question, that's all. I'm not sure how any of that helped us at all. What, what well, I, I, th I thought it was a very important clarification. I mean, there's not some sort of, I mean, what you describe as a wholesale sell off uh, is an orderly process to divest surplus, uh, you know, properties yep. that are surplus to requirements. For no, I didn't imply that it was disorderly. I'm trying to establish whether there are any housing affordability outcomes attached. Well, we're increasing, in a small way, we're increasing the supply of relevant properties into uh, relevant markets, but um, probably not material enough to have a, um, in it to, on its own, yep. uh, to have a housing affordability impact. Okay, is there any reason why not? Is housing Senator, affordability something that is of interest to this well, government? Well, of course, but like, but the, not, this is this doesn't come within the context of the Commonwealth <coughs> government's uh, divestment of surplus land. Exactly, and I'm trying to establish why on earth it doesn't. Mm. And you feel well, you, you're take, why, why doesn't you're it? suggesting we should sell property at prices other than market value? Is that, is that what you're suggesting? I'm suggesting that if we're in the middle of liquidating Commonwealth's stock of land. In well, the liquidating middle. again, I mean, that's a, that's Disposing, a bit of no, you, you choose your language. Disposing of, selling, divesting. Well, there's a specific issue in the Albury Wodonga uh, region which relates to the winding down of the Albury Wodonga Development okay. Corporation. Uh, be beyond that, it really uh, is uh, you know, spread across a very large continent and the Correct. number of properties is relatively small. Um, so, um, you know, it, 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 w it would not be realistic to expect 
the material impact on property prices from the comparatively small property uh, divestments that we're talking about in a national context? Um, I'm not proposing that by divesting this, these holdings of land that you'd have a material impact on property prices just by <coughs> throwing it back onto the open market. What I'm suggesting is that as a condition of sale, or even as the purpose of the sale, you could be putting this into affordable forms of tenure and making material difference in those particular areas, whether it be Albury Wodonga or anywhere else. And you appear to be saying that there's no, there's no link whatsoever between this government's housing affordability policy, if there is one, and the disposal of these assets. I'm asking you well, why these, not? These, uh, well, these assets, uh, as is our responsibility, are uh, divested at market value. I mean, that is what the Australian taxpayer would expect us to do. Well, some Australian taxpayers are experiencing extraordinary housing stress. They might expect you to take an interest in that as well. So, how, so with a very small number of uh, properties, uh, how, how would you propose? It's quite a few thousand hectares. Uh, so, but m maybe you need to specify, uh, you know, your, your your questions in relation to specific geographic areas where there is such opportunity, in your view? It's more than 600 properties. I'll know a little bit more about it when the list has been tabled. It's a shame we don't have that to help guide this conversation. It's more than 600 properties across the entire country in the middle of what, um, you know, there, there are demand ends of the equation. There are significant supply problems as well. You're sitting on substantial supply, hundreds if not thousands of hectares of land that you could kick out the door with affordability conditions attached as a condition of sale. Is that something that well, has occurred I, I, I to think, anybody I, inside I think, the government? That you might as do you that? say, you haven't got uh, relevant information uh, in order to properly inform your judgment in relation to these matters. I suggest that you uh, wait until we provide that information to you on notice before you jump to conclusions on what may or may not be possible. I mean, I understand the point you're trying to make, uh, but you know, again, when it comes to residential property, uh, you know the uh, program in relation to the Albury Wodonga region is obviously very geographically contained. Why do uh, we keep coming back to Albury Wodonga? Well, because there are because sites that is scattered be right across the whole well, because that is the largest number of single single number of residential properties okay. that finance is currently involved in divesting. Do you do you believe right. the Western Australian housing market is experiencing a certain amount of stress? That so people we're are living also, in housing we're also involved in a uh, divestment in program in relation to some properties in the parliamentary triangle. Uh, you know, which are not suitable for residential uh, accommodation. So you, you can't make a generic statement in relation to... No. Um, you, know, you can't make a generic statement in relation to uh, every property that uh, might be subject to a potential divestment. No, I'm not arguing that all of them should have housing affordability conditions attached. So question on notice number 50, F54 said the 2013 Commonwealth Land Audit identified 470 properties that may be divested with 351 potentially suitable for residential use. So let's just stick to the 351. Why is the Commonwealth Government not attached to any housing affordability conditions to the disposal of any of those properties? If I'm wrong and you have been, I'd be delighted to have that error well, pointed what, out. What would you describe as housing affordability conditions? Well, pulling it into the NRAS scheme, for example. So <laughs> grants of... Like, imagine if one government department talked to another one. You've got very well, we, talented we public do, servants we, we working on housing affordability. We do talk to each other, but, uh, like, um, yeah. You're shaking your head as though I've asked you to, to solve cold fusion from the desk. Is it really that hard to attach housing yeah. affordability outcomes to the disposal of surplus Commonwealth land? Why don't you keep putting your questions and we'll see to what extent we can assist you. Uh, okay, does that mean that your advisors are going and checking the register to see if there are any affordability outcomes? Well, this is really the only question I've got. Well, if, if, that, is the, to put the if that is the on only notice. question you've got, let us take on notice what it is that we're doing in that context and, and we'll, we'll get back to you on notice. Does that conclude your question, Senator Ludman? I will, I will leave it there. I might come back a little bit later, but I'll leave it there for now.